let's understand what is that life cycle means, right? So before we go to the software development life cycle or we come to the CRM life cycle to know what is the difference between these both. Now, the basically to understand a life cycle is that every object or you know, almost every object can be measured in the form of life. For example, as a human being, we born as infant, then we grow as a little bit of you know, baby. After that, we come to an age called as teenage. Then we move to an age called as young age. Then we move to a middle age. After that, we move to old age. And then we move to Ram Ram. Right? So you see that a human being also travels through a multiple stages of their life. And this is called one life cycle. During the life cycle of human being in this earth, we everyone passes through these stages. Same way, whenever we were implementing CRM, there are few stages defined, right? That can be defined by your Six Sigma, if you have heard. Those stages can be defined by CMM level 5 or level 3. Those stages can be defined by ISO, ISO 9001, ISO 2000 something, ISO. It can be defined by ITIL, right? It can be defined by PMI or PMP. There are many organizations in the world, those who are defining, you know, how a project has to be handled, right? So hence, every CRM, right, passes through some stages. For example, how does it, you know, how does it relates to you? Question raise this, to implementation, right? So these are the stages that we have in implementation called as define, measure, analyze, control, customize, implement and feedback whenever this all these seven stages are crossed or achieved then we say that it's a one end to end implementation you can complete this life cycle or i have performed or i or i completed one complete life cycle implementation these stages might differ as i told you here i'm calling define measure analyze control you are in your you know, a company, you might have something called as propose, execute, you know, go live, feedback. You might have a four stages. Some companies might have five stages. So it is what you take approach, whether you take a PMI approach, whether you PMP approach, ITIL approach, Six Sigma approach, CMM approach, you know, ISO approach. You have a lot of approaches, you know, to do this. This approach that is displayed on the screen is from Six Sigma right and TQM total quality management approach right most of the company prefers this so now let's understand what happens the first stage is called define stage this is the stage where consultant tomorrow if you are a senior consultant right you will travel to on site you go there you try to understand the client requirement these are all before implementation before even development start so you need to know what to develop. To understand what to develop, you need to have some documentation done called as blueprint, which is commonly known by everyone. So how this blueprint documentation is coming up, that's what been defined in a stage called as define stage. So define is a stage where a consultant, a Salesforce consultant, right, or a Salesforce business analyst, you know, or Salesforce project manager, or business development managers, all these people or something, you know, they travel on site. They go and meet the client. They try to understand. So after your business development team has convinced the client saying that our company called HCL has enough capability and resources to give you a proper solution and we'll be completing this solution in expected about one year and the cost range would be about, you know, 3.2 million. It's, I'm just giving an estimated cross. And if a client says, okay, I'm fine with this budget, I'm fine with your timeline, okay, then there is hope that yes, the client might go with the project. Immediately, they will, you know, try to interact with the client and when, the cl when they are convinced that the client is okay, right, you travel on site now. You go there, you try to find out and that's a very important and crucial role. It is not given to people who are two years experience or three years experience, 
right? So when tomorrow down the lane, when you'll be working in Salesforce, right, you became a senior consultant, you might need to travel on site to the client location to have a lot of meetings. I see the defined stage, the first thing that you're going to do is that as a study. If you're writing, write down. Under the defined stage, put an arrow and say that what are the tasks that are done. The first task in a defined stage is nothing but as is analysis. How the current system is running, how the business is currently running called as is analysis. You will be doing as is analysis. You will be doing problem analysis. What are the different problems the current system has? So that tomorrow when you propose or you build a system, that system should not have the same problem. So you do the second task that you do is called as problem analysis. Third, you do requirement analysis. You try to understand the requirement of the client, what they want, what is the requirement, what they are doing. You also, that is the third task, requirement analysis. Fourth, ta fourth task, you will do a process flow diagram. How the process is currently running. You might also do or you might also capture the data flow diagram. What are the different data flows you have? You might also capture all the validation at every stage of data moving. What are the validation? How the data is getting added? All these tasks you'll perform in a stage called as define. This will give a clear picture of what customer wants, right? You might come across 100 or 300 requirements in a point wise. That means whenever a new customer is added, customer should get an email alert and an SMS alert. The SMS alerts or email alerts sent to the customer should be in a standard format. See two requirements. Like this, you will collect all the rules, business rules, and that all are done in a stage called as define stage. Once you collect all the rules and after the define stage, you realize that there are 350 such rules customer is expecting with 22 you know, drawbacks which customer doesn't want, which the current system has. So now you have to go back with all these requirement analysis and you go to the next stage called as measure. This is the phase or stage where the first task that you do is called as requirement mapping. You try to map. These are the 300 rules that I collected. Can I do that? If I can do that, how can I do that? So here also you require a Salesforce expertise. A person who is expert in Salesforce has been working a long time. He might be able to see those and requirements and can say that, yes, we can do that. Yes, this can be done, but we require some type of integration. Yes, this can be done. We need to you know, write some type of codes. Yes, this can be done only when this is available. Yes, this can be done easily. So he will start measuring all the you know, work that was collected, whatever the requirement was collected, he will do a mapping of what the first task, task is that requirement mapping, right? Next, what he will do, he will do how much time it's required, not only mapping, to do this task, how much task, how many people are required, an estimated work time or an, a billing time, plus estimated resources required. What are the technology I require? What are the resources I require? All these are done. Resource analysis, right? Resource analysis, time motion study, right? And resource mapping. Resource mapping, requirement mapping. So all these four tasks are done in a phase called as measure, right? So in this stage, what we do? Number one, we do the requirement mapping. Number two, we do time motion study, how much time it's required. Number three, we do resource analysis, how much resource is required. Number four, we do resource mappings, right? When all these are done, we see that out of 300 points of business rule collected from the client, we just can offer or we can effectively deliver 280. 20 are some challenges which we can't achieve. That all workaround, you have, you have to see the workaround. So those will go to the next stage called as analyze. You will analyze everything now. 
you will prepare a blueprint. This is the phase in an analyze phase where your SOWs, your blueprints, your documents are prepared. This is the phase where you plan the whole project that this is the way we will do. First we'll do this, then we'll do that, then we'll do this. All these are done. Mostly in this phase, we have business analysts and project managers. You might have a very limited role in the phase called as analyze. So once they analyze, the document writer writes the document, then it moves to a phase called as control phase. This is the phase where sign off happens. Right? So what happens in the analyze phase? In the analyze phase, you have you know, uh, effective you know, solution. What is the effective solution you can provide? You draw a proposed process flow. Second task is proposed process flow. Proposed process flow. Next, proposed solution. How the proposed solution will look? Right? Then you will have complete blueprint. That's all will be included in the blueprint. Right? Once these are done, you go back to your client and you hand over the documents. This is what we collected from your team. After this, this is what the understanding is and this is what your people are expecting, right? And all are documented and this is what we can offer. These are the 300 rules collected. 280 can be met with Salesforce CRM. 20 cannot be met. So out of that, 12 we can exist with, you know, these ways, some technical or manual or something, right? I don't see these are that much important processes five we cannot complete or if we complete it then we require high money and high resources so it's again your choice so all these analysis you prepare and you give it to the client back client will analyze we will see everything and in the control phase the sign off happens so in the control phase what do you have you have a project sign off plus backup plans right plus milestone and delivery expectations Client will ask, okay, when can you give me the first look? So three months from now, we'll be completing our all the forms and layouts. Okay, I want to see those. I don't want to get a last minute surprises. So I want to check it out what your team is doing. So I want to have every weekend, week, weekend Friday call, right? All these are decided in a control phase. Where my team will be working? So the project will be scattered in three locations all the form designing by Hyderabad team, all the report designing by Bangalore team, all the security profiles and controls by Chennai team. And the project will be properly coordinated by a project manager. And all these plannings, documentations, who will do which task after when, when this expected start date for this task, everything is done in the phase called as control phase. Once the control phase is passed, everything you have a shape now then comes the picture customize or also called as the development this is the phase where you play an important role your role is now to deliver on time as per the client requirement what is the client requirement the requirement that you have collected for you from your defined you measured it right you analyzed it and it was signed off by the client they want this and now whatever he wants, you have to design that. And all these designing are done in a phase called as customize or also called as development phase. So in this phase, you do development and then you do little testing. You yourself will test whether everything is okay or not, right? You do development, testing, right? And right? thorough end-to-end -end, whether it's working or not all these are done in a space called as customize so all the development this is the longest tenure many a times this is the longest tenure nine months six months the project is going on right so hence after nine months now you complete your project whatever the client you have agreed with the client the sign off happens all the 280 business rules are now implemented the screens are ready you know, a few exceptions, whichever you can't implement it, all these are as per agreed, you know, conditions. Now you go back to your client. Before you go back to your client, your HCL team, the testing team, will test it thoroughly. Remember that in Salesforce, we don't require testing tools. 
Salesforce contains everything. We will see that there is a testing also available in Salesforce. So all this testing will be done by the testing team thoroughly. After the software is thoroughly tested in the phone number field, they will try to enter an address. In the name field, they will try to enter number and check whether the system is saving or not. They will do all valid. You know, in the money field, they will try to enter some text character. They will try to enter special character. They will try to hit save button. They will do left and right testing on the software. Once the testing is done, now HCL goes back to the client and says that, hey guys, your project is now almost getting ready. We are the timeline as per the agreed timeline. We are almost here to deliver the project. Right. So hence what happens? So once the project is ready and you know you feel that okay everything is fine right Apollo hospital will not agree to install it directly they will first you know send few doctors few nurse few receptionist a sample of employee or an end user will test so you have to run a test called as UAT test so in the customize phase you also do your UAT test you do all your UAT test, you do your end user training, right? In the UAT test, you see that, you know, there is any defect comes up. People are complaining, hey, SMS has to go, but it's not going. You once again go back to the development team, you find out, guys, what has happened? You people tested it, everything is fine, but now while testing, you know, you know Apollo Hospital has complained, the SMS is not going, what is this going on? So all these feedbacks are collected and they're again reworked and again the development happens and everything once you're fine with the software and you are okay all the UAT test whoever has participated in the UAT test you know feels fine and whatever the test cases you know they'll be they'll be using their experiences in the past whatever the problems they have faced they will try to repeat the same scenario in the current system so they will be trying to see how the system is behaving. If the system is behaving as they expected as per the business rule, then they will do a sign off saying that, okay, looks like that this is fine. Immediately, the next stage is called implement or go live stage. This is the stage you will start migrating the data. Any type of as is or you know, uh, any type of current data that is available, you will start loading them. You will start implementing from sandbox to the production server. You will move all your work that has been properly tested, thoroughly tested. You will deploy them in the production environment, which I'll be showing you how to do this. So you'll be deploying in the production environment. And then you say effective tomorrow night 12 a.m. Say Apollo Hospital goes live on Salesforce. And next day morning, every patient comes will now get you know, they will be entering the details where? In the salesforce.com. So now your software is live. People are using it. People in the sense, all the employees of Apollo around the world, you know, using your, the, the software that you designed, you know, all the receptionists using your patient entry form. All the doctors are using, you know, doctor form, fees form, you know, everybody's using their own solu uh, solution that you developed it as per the business rule. There might be some feedback coming up. There might be some issues coming up after it goes live, right? And those issues, it will be again reported back to you. Feedback. Again, you need to define what is the issue. You need to measure, you know, whether can we tackle this issue? Is it that what was agreed? If it's not what was agreed initially, you will send it back to the client stating that, hey guys, this is what not agreed. So it is not in the scope. If you want, we need to charge you extra for this because this is some extra work that now you are asking us. So that is called as the change request. Please raise a change request. This is not a part of existing, you know, uh, 300 rules that we collected. It is something new. So now you go ahead, how much resources required? How much time is required? You plan it. Who will do this? Again, the control stage. So after the planning is done, then it comes to the development stage. You develop it. Again, it goes to the testing stage where it will be tested thoroughly. Once it is tested thoroughly, then you will implement it in the production environment. So till the time you have a zero feedback, once a project has a zero feedback on any you know, bugs or 
you know, rules, problem, issues, we call them as a complete life cycle implementation. Your role in the future can be in define stage, measure stage, right? Analyze stage, it's a little, little in the analyze stage, and then in customize and implement stage. And once these stages are completed, the project goes live and you say that, hey guys, please clear all of our payments because we delivered the project, right? And we'll give you one month support. After that, if you want any type of support, there is a support project coming up. So in a support project to maintain this system that you have delivered or you have implemented, you need to have, Apollo Hospital doesn't have an expertise to handle this because they are all doctors. They don't know about Salesforce. So tomorrow if any data issues come, who can handle? So you can say, okay, we can take, we have deployed it, so we know better your solution. So let's me do this. I'll have three resources dedicated to this project and we'll be charging you monthly the, this much amount. So Apollo will be paying monthly to HCL and you or any one of the three candidates from the class might become a support analyst or support engineer. And your work is nothing but customer raise trouble ticket, open the trouble ticket, understand the trouble ticket, right? Do the required patchings or fix whatever it is and close it on the tool and send a mail back to a client saying that, hey, your issue is resolved. Can you please check now? All these are called a support project and that comes after the implementation or deployment is over. Tomorrow if somebody asks you what is the stage your project is, so you can say that hey guy, my stage, my project is in the production environment and we are, I'm so busy in releases, I'm so busy in you know, Monday is the release, that is nothing but go live, or Monday is the go live, now currently I'm busy in UAT test, I'm busy in collecting UAT test feedbacks, or hey guys, my project is in the analyze stage, we are still measuring what to be do. We are in the customizer or development stage. My project is in the control stage where, you know, maybe in another two days or by next week, we'll be, you know, start working on it. Or my project, or I'm at this moment in defined stage where we are just at the initial root level. We are trying to understand the client requirement. That is the reason people many a times put in their, you know, roles and responsibility in the resume. You can see that. They, they, they write that I have been a part of blueprint preparation, right? I have, you know, I have seen many a times. So this is called as your complete life cycle. 